Okay, folks, so today I'm going to be working on my motor. Um, I had an issue with the coils here, and I bought these from Amazon. They were a two pack for 28 bucks, and I cheaped out. What you need are the real coils. There's the part number and everything for you. You can see that, and I've got two. So, from $28 for these cheapy coils that actually crapped out on me. I already took them off and I checked them, but I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So, stay tuned. Let's get to this boat. Okay, so what I did to determine what these coils were bad first was I pulled my spark plugs. Let me get this out of the way. And you are going to need a spark plug socket and I have to put this is a 3 8 and then just go ahead and take your spark plugs out I've already had this a little loose so that's why it's, they don't seem like they're in there tight okay and then I just remove these spark plugs and the spark plugs are good. I just replaced the spark plugs. Oh, I'd say whenever I replace these. And it has been three weeks. So I replaced the plugs and everything with those coils. And the plugs are still good. Make sure that they're gapped. You follow the manufacturer's uh, suggestion for the gap on these plugs. And these plugs are supposed to be 1.5 millimeters. So that's very important. Now, take one of your plugs here. Put it back into your your wire make sure it clips on there now i sacrificed this bolt right here to paint on it but if you don't have a bolt if everything's painted then just hit it with a piece of sandpaper and a little uh, brass brush now i'm going to turn off the lights and you should see a spark jump if you put this end of your spark plug onto that bare metal bolt you should see a spark jump in between this electrode and this top here you should see a little purple spark there and that's what i did as i went like this and i hit my starter and and i saw no jump no spark jump i'm going to show you what that looks like right now okay i know this is dark but it is dark for a reason so now i am touching my spark plug to that and then i hit my starter See, I see no spark jumping between the diode and the top of the spark plug. And you should see a spark. So that's one indication that, this, that the coils are bad. Okay, folks. So here's your tool list that you're going to need to swap out these coils from these cheapies to these OEMs. An 8 and 9 millimeter uh, wrench. I got a quarter inch ratchet here with a 10 millimeter socket on it three ace drive ratchet with an extension with my 13 16 socket for um, spark plugs uh, I have this little spark gap tool that I got from AutoZone it works just fine I just want to gap my plugs make sure they're good uh, a couple zip ties here for the, where the wires go back on the coils um, I use a brass brush just to clean off the end of my plugs just in case anything got jumped up on there or whatever uh digital multimeter i picked this one up here at harbor freight i think for five bucks about five years ago and it still lasted um it's not bad for what you get and you also need the coils so here is the part that you'll need from sierra marine um i'll leave the link in the description for these below uh yeah so that's really all the tools you're going to need to swap out these coils so let's get to it and let's get these coils removed Okay, so you're going to take your 8 millimeter wrench that you got here. These cheapy coils from Amazon, they actually had 8 millimeter nuts on them. The new ones have 9 millimeter. That's why I have two separate sizes. So you're just going to take and loosen these up just enough so you can take them off. Loosen those up a little. And then your 10 millimeter socket is to take the top off here this top bolt this is a through bolt here that goes all the way down through this 
So you are going to take those off. I get everything about where I could take it off with my fingers. You can see it's already loose, and I'll have to show you what I did to the inside. So let's take these, let's take these coils off here. Make sure that you have the right plug wires if you happen to replace your wires. These wires are still good. Um, there's really there's nothing wrong with them at all. There's no corrosion or anything. So I'm setting those off to the side to reuse them. Once again, make sure that you have the correct size wires if you are going to replace your wires. Another little tip too, I want to slow down here. Another little tip too is make sure you take a picture of this before you do it because you have only one negative lead going to this upper coil here, which I mean upper because it's going to upper cylinders, a two cylinder engine. So let's take these apart. If you notice, I'm putting everything right back where it was just so that way I'm not missing anything and I don't lose anything. They only have to be in a couple turns. So when I got these coils from Amazon, they had this square hole cut in them and it didn't come with an insert. So I had to make my own insert out of nuts by just filing down two sides of it so they fit in there. So that's another indication that they're junk. Okay, so we're gonna unbox our new coils here. Now this is what they look like out of the package. They're going to have this rubber protective coating or boot over it and it comes with a spacer for the through bolt. Now as you take these off, just slide them off real easy. That's actually going to be garbage. You'll see they taped on the spacers that they used here. And then you just take these off. Now, one key note here is you see how easy those spacers came off of here? When I got those ones from Amazon, I had to beat the center out of it. So, you're just going to place this in there and then your through bolt goes through it. Okay, folks, let's test the ohms here on our ohm meter that we got from Harbor Freight for five bucks. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that your red lead is into the volts and ohm and amperage meter hole. And then your common is your always your black. Uh, I have it set to 2,000 ohms here. And ohm is this little symbol here. looks like a horseshoe. And it goes from 200 all the way up to 200 or 2,000 K, which is 2 million, I believe. Um, so what you're looking for here, it's going to read 1 when you start. And what you're looking for here on a primary, when you touch the red cable, your red lead to the positive side and then the black the negative or common to the negative side you should get anywhere from one to two to maybe even four ohms depending on the the coil pack that you're testing so i'm just going to go right here to the positive and negative and i'm getting 0.2 so that's good or two i mean it's not 0.2 i'm sorry that's just two that was the first coil let's test the next one and go positive to negative on the primary and we're getting the same thing too okay okay so now that we've checked the primaries the top two here let's check the secondary so inside this hole there's a little bit of copper brass or whatever's in there that's what your spark plug wire the top of it connects with so you're going to put your positive lead in there and then you're going to hold it on that and then you're going to touch the negative side here to get a reading. Now, if you're not touching it all the way in here, you won't get a reading, but the minute you make contact with it, you'll get a reading. So I'm reading 258 ohms on this. So that's a really good one. And then we'll check out the second one here. Same thing, positive inside the, the secondary positive hole. And then right here, oops, 
I missed it. And we're running 257 on this one. So that's good. Okay, so remember, this is where we took our coils off of. So I just put them in a few turns so that way I didn't lose any bolts or anything. Now, my original coils came with a spacer and this little ground plate. I really like this system. The new one that I got comes with this little cheapy thing and it's got tape residue on it already. Um, you can see the thickness difference here. I feel I'll get a better ground using the original equipment. So I'm going to remove this off of my coil and when I'm done you're taking it off of the negative side and this will go on top. So let's put this thing, let me get this other one off and let's put this back together. Okay, so now we're ready to install our new coil that we've tested. You're gonna put this sleeve in the center. Be careful because it shakes in there so you don't wanna drop it inside your motor. Now you're going to put your spacer back on this. Then you're going to put your ground terminal back onto your center bolt here. And remember this ground terminal needs to go in this hole as well. So once you get all that together, I lift the coil up just to look underneath to see where I have to start my bolt. Don't cross thread this. Just take your time. There's no rush at all. So once I get it on there finger tight, Now I will add my lock washer and nut, which come with the new coils. And then just reinstall this lock washer and this nut, just finger tight. You can take this positive terminal off here. Sorry if my fingers are getting in the way. You can take this positive terminal and then you take your your lock washer off of there. Just be careful not to drop them into the motor. Then you can put your positive terminal on there, your lock washer, and then your nut back on to the positive post. Hand tight, everything's still a little wiggly. Okay, let's do the same thing with our other coil. We're gonna put our spacer down in there. And then I left this stuff together here because I don't didn't need to take it apart so this goes right over the negative terminal again down into the hole and then I just find the hole there lift that up a little bit take my time make sure you don't cross thread it putting a new coil on there now you could put your lock washer back on there and you could put your nut back on there Okay, yeah, and then you're going to put your, you're going to remove your lock washer. Just be careful that you don't drop these parts. Remove that lock washer, put your connection on there. Lock washer, then your nut. And you're going to get that started there. My big fat fingers, sorry, if they're getting in the way. Okay, and then you're going to just finger tighten those down. Now look, everything's loose right now, which is okay. So, I take my 10 millimeter socket again, make sure everything's down to where it will touch before I start to wrench on this. Now, your 10 millimeter wrench or ratchet. Now, don't go crazy with this. Okay? Don't go crazy, just nice and slow and steady till it stops. Okay, same thing over here. No need to go crazy. One of the things too, make sure that your coils are in line. And nice steady pressure just until it stops. It doesn't have to, because if you strip out the ground screws in here now you got a bigger can of worms so you can take your nine millimeter and then you can tighten all these down
And the same thing goes with these. These are just brass screws, so don't go nuts. Don't go crazy on them. Just so they're very snug. If you do it too much, you'll break that off, and then you got to buy a new coil. Because there's no way to fix that. So, just a nice, easy pressure. So you don't break nothing off of there. Like I said, remember, this is brass. You can see that wire still moves there, so it's going to be a little tight, but you don't want to go crazy. See, it stopped on me there, and my wire's nice and tight. All right, let's connect all these, and we'll come back with the next step. Okay, so now we've got our new coils mounted. So what we're going to do now is we're going to reinstall our wires. So there's a little electrical brass piece in here in the end of your wire, and it's the same on the inside there. Now this one goes over a spark plug. This one goes right into this hole here. And once you get it in the hole, it's pretty set. So you'll need the zip tie there, and then you'll have to zip tie this boot right just right back on there that's okay I make them kind of tight so it won't move around as much because this is an outboard motor you're talking about a lot of vibration a lot of movement snip off that end we'll grab our other wire here and as you noticed I put some dielectric grease in there to keep corrosion and stuff down but if you want you could slide this down to make sure that you get that into where it needs to be. It should clip in there. You should feel it clip in there. And then make sure that your wire is facing the right way. Another zip tie here. Like I said, I like to get the zip ties kind of tight on there to where there's really not much movement, to where they can't come out of there. Once again, pop that off close. Okay, so now we're ready to test these new coils with a spark plug to see if we get spark. So, let me move this camera and I'll show you that. Okay folks, so here we go. I'm gonna show you the spark here. It's gonna be dark, but maybe I can turn this a little so I can see. I'm turning my spark plug so that way you can see the spark jump. Okay, you can see that I'm getting a really good, nice blue spark out of that. Let me try to move you here a little. Try not to spray my camera with gas either. See, we're getting a really good spark off of the one cylinder. So, I'm going to check my other plug here. We'll put that back into the boot. All right, let's check the spark on the top, or top cylinder. I may have to move you here just so that way you can see the spark jump. And make sure. Oh yeah, getting a really good spark there. And that's what you wanna see. You want to really see that really nice spark. It's even sparking as I pull it away from there. So, And with the cylinders out, I have to be careful so that way I don't uh, start a fire. All right, well, let's get this thing outside and see if we can't get it running. Okay, folks, so let's start her up to our new coil replacement. Okay, folks, well, that's it. That's your coil replacement on your Mercury 9.9 two-stroke outboard. Well, 
If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if you found it useful, if it helped you out, or if you'd like to see anything else. So, until next time, we got to fix this engine. We'll see you on the water, or we'll see you in the woods. Thanks for watching.